All right, if you guys are on the fence about getting a robot lawnmower, I was too for the longest time, but I feel like the tech is finally there. And having tested all these robot lawnmowers, I've got one in the back, two out here in the front. In this video, I'm gonna tell you the best robot lawnmower for small lawns. We're going to be reviewing this, the Yuka, while the Yuba 2 does its thing. Oh, look at this, a little battle right here. And while the robots are working on both my neighbor's lawn and on my lawn, I'm gonna sit down right here. We're gonna talk about the yucca. The yucca is great for smallish yards that are pretty simple. It has a very simple design. When you unbox it, there's basically nothing that needs to be screwed in. Just a couple things that just need to snap on and it is good to go. You do need to remember to take out that foam insert that they have during shipping and that's about it. This lift handle is gonna be awesome because so many times on my other robotic lawnmowers, there's just no nice place to hold on to. This makes it so easy. how it charges. So you have these long prongs coming out. Very futuristic looking, reminds me of something you'd see on like Mars, something in space. You have your control buttons, home, power, mow, start. That's your rain sensor. If it senses moisture, water from either sprinklers or the rain, it will not mow. Here is the stop button. This is the key. Without that key, it doesn't work. This adjusts the height of the grass. And this green light is on, and blinking means it's trying to connect the whole thing to the satellites. And then the setup in terms of connecting it online and updating it, that had a couple sticky points, and let's talk about it here. Hooking up the Luba 2, the other version I have out there, to my app, super difficult to get it updated and going. Let's see how this goes. There's a little lights Ooh. start charging i do like the audio feedback let's get this connected we're going to add this yuka and connect it to her hotspot, which should be more seamless than when i try to connect it to my home for some reason so far so good so i usually get stuck in this part where it's trying to connect to the network all right, hallelujah. Using the iPhone as a hotspot hack worked. 96% done. Now the next dilemma. As we were setting this up, the other mower, the Luba 2, as you saw, it came over and it mowed my lawn. We have no lawn for it to mow in my yard, but I was able to talk to my neighbors and their lawn is looking a little shaggy. So what we're going to do is I'm going to map it out on their lawn and have it mow their yard. So it's going to have to travel quite some distance. We're gonna see how the yucca can do down here. It's going to have to mow all of this, cut across, mow over here, and then I think we'll see if we can have it cut, cut across all the way over here. That would be pretty incredible if it could do all that. So we've talked about the setup. We've talked about where this yucca shines. Another cool thing about the yucca that a lot of the other mowers, robot mowers on the market can't do is it can sweep and it can bag your clippings. That is probably one of the most common questions I get when my neighbors walk by and stop me to talk about these mowers is what does this mower do with the clippings? Well, there's something called mulching. It's actually better for your lawn to mulch your clippings as long as you're keeping the clippings short. So it's actually good for your lawn to have it mulch. But if you like to bag your clippings, the yucca back there can do that. It actually has a separate attachment upgrade that you can buy where you can, it's a sweeper and a bagger. Super easy to set up and it is actually really cool. If you like to bag your grass and you don't want it mulched, then that is the way to go. So with the mowing attachment, it gets stuck every now and then. Just because when I programmed it, it was not programmed to have such a big thing hanging off the bat. All right, let's talk about the pros and the cons. The biggest pro for me is how great the app is. You're paying a lot less for the Yuka and you're getting the same great app, the same great technology for a much smaller price. You're able to get a very capable mower and the great app, kind of like getting the smallest iPhone. It's still a great phone and it gives you access to all the apps, the same great iOS that you have in the most expensive iPhone. As far as 
the capabilities of cutting, it does a great job. It has floating dual cutting discs beneath and what that does is it allows for a nice even cut. And so I would say that the Yuka does a more even and a more straight cut than say the Segway that I have in the back cutting my backyard lawn. What's gotta be the coolest thing on these Memotion mowers is the fact that you can have an FPV mode. So you're able to actually see through the camera of these mowers and see exactly what it's looking at. How about that? My kids don't want to mow the lawn anymore. Yeah, really good. Yeah, he does a good job, right? Maybe no people cut him. Any people buy take one. <laughs> oh, yeah, good. The guys that do the yard work for most of the neighbors, they just arrived. The only two homes they don't do, my home and my neighbors, because we have kids that mow our lawns. Well, we had kids that mowed lawns. We've uh, resorted to these robot lawn mowers so that we can continue kind of DIY, taking care of our own lawn maintenance. These guys, a lot quieter. I was able to film this whole video with them mowing right in front of me. And yet they're just, they're across the street and it's still too loud for me to make a video properly. I'm right next to them and you can hear me talking, no problem. So we may relocate while they're mowing. We'll finish up here in the house. Wow, the lawnmowers are cutting front and back. These robotic lawnmowers, super quiet. And because they're so quiet, you're able to mow them at times of the day where you otherwise wouldn't mow, including nighttime when people are sleeping. It used to always get stuck and lost, especially at night in the dark. And I think they must have done something with an upgrade because I haven't had that problem. And I think that has to do with the constant updating they do to their already fantastic app. Very customizable. They updated the app so now it randomizes the direction that it mows each time. One time it'll mow in a certain direction, the next time it'll mow in a different direction so that you won't get ruts over time from the mower constantly mowing in the same direction. And that's important, especially if you're mowing every other day like I am. I can just relax here inside my air conditioned house while those mowers are hard at work mowing. Another common complaint that I saw in a lot of the comments from my previous videos was, it's great these lawn mowers, but once they're outside of Wi-Fi range, then you're out of luck because they're going to get lost. They're not going to be able to know where they are and they just won't work properly. And that is not true. What I've found is especially mowing uh, all the way down to the furthest end of my neighbor's yard where my Wi-Fi does not reach, the mower still mows over there, no problem. It knows where to go using the GPS system and it can go well beyond my Wi-Fi range and continue mowing. The drawbacks, once you're outside of Wi-Fi range, you don't have the first person view. So you're not able to get in there and look through the camera and see what the mower is seeing. And also if it were to get stuck or if it were to have any issues, it won't be able to notify you. It can't let you know. It just doesn't have the Wi-Fi to connect to. You can pay a little bit more so that you can get a SIM card and connect that way. We have not chosen to do that instead. We're just using the Wi-Fi, but if the Wi-Fi were to go out in the house, it would still continue mowing my yard, my neighbor's yard, no problem, because it doesn't need Wi-Fi to mow. And then the other thing that I love about this device is even though it mows slow, it just mows, it goes. It, the only time it doesn't mow is if it's raining outside. And so while my, some may say, well, it mows so slow, it, the thing is, as long as I'm not mowing it, it can mow as slow as it wants. It just needs to get the job done. Once the battery goes low, it knows to go back to its charging station. It'll charge up to 80%, which is actually really fast to charge up to 80%. Anyone that drives an EV knows, anyone that has a cell phone knows, a laptop knows, that first 80% of charge charges really fast. From 80 to 100%, it takes a little bit longer. And the mower is smart enough to know to, once it's at 80%, that's good enough, then it continues mowing again. I think the, the biggest con that people are gonna run into, some people, the setup and connecting it to Wi-Fi, and I think that just has to do with my home Wi-Fi system. I use a Google Mesh system, and for some reason, it just doesn't play nice. The wiper function seems pretty cool, but I think without fluid, I'm not sure how effective it's going to be. I've been running the U 
Luca for a couple weeks now and I haven't had any issues with my camera getting dirty. Another issue I wish they offered and maybe they will offer this in the future is for the Yuka, I wish it had a garage. The Yuba 2 has a nice little garage. My Segway has a nice little garage. Just nice for protecting it from the elements, keeping it clean, keeping it out of the sun. So there is a pretty significant price difference between the smaller model from the bigger model. And you would think there'd be a difference between the battery sizes, but the battery sizes are identical between the two models. So know that the only difference is the amount of memory or storage inside the mowers. So if you have a bigger area to mow with more zones, then you'll want to go with the bigger version of this mower. If you have a smaller yard with fewer zones, then you can get away with the smaller mower. But the difference in price doesn't get you any extra mow time. They both mow the same amount, the same length, the same time, because they all have the same battery, the same hardware. It's just the memory. For most people, you're not going to need to shell out more money for the bigger version of this mower just because all it gets you is more memory and not more battery. Initially, I thought the shelf seemed a little flimsy. Then I realized the shell is actually the bumper to let the device know when it's run into an obstacle. The shell though does come pretty low. I'd like that shell to be raised up a little bit. It seems like it, the clearance is a little low. It comes down a little too low and then it catches on things. Okay, so it looks like you got stuck here. I did not program the fire hydrant as a no mo zone. I just figured it would use its vision and its bumpers to figure out where to go. Oh, that's what happened. The bumper had caught on one of these bolts here. The robot front will lift. And finally, I do love the fact that it has a manual mowing ability so you can mow while looking through the 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 camera of the mower or just watching the mower and you controlling it through your phone. Very cool for mowing those areas and doing a little touch-up work for areas that it may have missed. I do wish that you could control it through the camera of the lawnmower through Wi-Fi. Right now you can only do it with Bluetooth. You have to be basically near it, next to it to, to control it that way. I would like for the times where, let's say I'm at work and the mower gets stuck or it stops for some reason, I can look out the camera, oh it's, it's run into something or there's something blocking it. I can then take control and using both the front and the rear cameras, that's the other thing. The uh, Yuka comes with two cameras, a front and kind of a skyward rear camera. I can see where I am and control it to get it out of that sticky spot so that I can continue mowing. So I frequently get asked, because I have both mowers in the front yard, which one should they choose? Well, this is what I tell them. The Yuka is much more affordable, costs a fraction of the price as its bigger brother with its all-wheel drive. If you've got a small, relatively simple yard that may have some nooks and crannies, then go for the Yuka. But if you have a yard that has a lot of slopes, a lot of inclines, uh, maybe some rough terrain to go over, then definitely consider the Yuba too. If you guys have any questions, let me know down in the comments below. Are these robot lawnmowers ready for prime time? Are they ready for you? Why or why not?